Tonight, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, along the fabulous strip in Las Vegas, Nevada, Boxing After Dark returns with a battle between two typically determined Mexican warriors. Super Bantamweight champion Eric Morales against former Super Bantamweight title holder Marco Antonio Barrera on a perfect, clear, cool night in Las Vegas. An intensely knowledgeable boxing crowd will fill the event center at the Mandalay Bay for a fight for which Mexican fans have waited several years. The former 122-pound world champion, Marco Antonio Barrera, against the current 122-pound title. Happy anniversary, Boxing After Dark. And yes, this telecast signifies the end of the fourth year, the beginning of the fifth year of what we think has been the landmark television series, HBO's Boxing After Dark. Once again, a fight for which we've waited, as have Mexican boxing fans a long time, Morales, the younger 122-pound world champion, against his Mexican predecessor, Barrera. Barrera from Mexico City, Morales from Tijuana. There's a class distinction between the two fighters, a geographic rivalry. There's a difference in fighting styles, and there are many other elements of parallel and opposite between them which make this an intense confrontation typical of the kinds of evenly matched battles we've become accustomed to seeing on Boxing After Dark over the years. So in honor of this fourth anniversary, let's look back now at some of the thrilling moments which have made Boxing After Dark, because of its competitive nature, a series which has changed the landscape of the sweet science of boxing. That's the best fight I have ever seen. of HBO's Boxing After Dark. In general, the idea was lower budgets, mostly lower weight classes, higher risk and higher reward for the fighters in matchups that were often dead even pick em fights going in. And let's see if tonight's bout can produce more of the kind of excitement we've seen over that period of time with HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, in the past four years, there have been quite a number of big, heavily promoted mega fights which have not lived up to their billing in terms of competitive drama from Johnny Tapia against Danny Romero to, of course, Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad in this very arena. Will tonight's fight, anticipated as it is by Mexican fans, live up to the standards that we've seen on Boxing After Dark? 
if not now, with two high testosterone <laughs> warriors, when? Is this finally the night in the fight when our high expectations are met or even surpassed? The genesis of this rivalry was about three or four years ago when Barrera was anointed as the heir apparent to Julio Cesar Chavez in the hearts and minds of his boxing men, countrymen. But then Morales replaced Barrera, and they've been duking it out toward this showdown ever since. In fact, it almost happened prematurely when the two fighters appeared in a soccer match with their followers six months ago and got into it so heavily that they had to be separated. Jim, only the referee can separate them tonight, and I don't think he's got too much work to do. Oh, but the crowd <laughs> factions are chanting against each other in the background, and maybe some of them are going to have to be separated. Meanwhile, two notes. Our regular expert commentator Roy Jones is not here tonight because of a family function, and there's one fight and one fight only on this card, so get ready for the main event. Tale of the tape between Eric Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera. You can see that Morales is the younger of the two. Barrera, at age 26, is in his 11th year as a professional fighter. Morales has been straining to make 122 pounds. He made it safely at 121 yesterday, looking a little starched to some of us. Tonight comes in at 130, and Barrera at 132. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and he cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. And Jim, huge controversy over the boxing gloves. Morales wanted to use a Japanese brand called Winning. Barrera wanted a Mexican brand, Reyes. They flipped the coin. Barrera won. They're using eight-ounce Reyes. And if you're a fight fan, you know that means the puncher's glove. Now, here's the man who dominated this weight class from 1995 into 1997 before he ran in to an American fighter named Junior Jones. Now he finds himself an underdog. Yesterday, the odds shot up to five or six to one in favor of Morales because of all the fans coming from Tijuana. Today, it went down to about three, three and a half to one because of all of Barrera's fans from Los Angeles. Even though he is a real Mexican fighter, both in style and substance, he hasn't fought in Mexico for over six years, Jim, because he found he could make more money in Los Angeles and Nevada. Six straight wins since the second of his two losses to Junior Jones. It would have been seven, but a fight in December was ruled a no contest when it was discovered that his opponent's record had been falsified and that he was, in fact, a former, former sparring partner of Barrera's. Now, here's a closer look at Mexico City's cultured, upper-middle-class fighter, Marco Antonio Barrera. Who turned pro at 15 and was 43-0 before Junior Jones's fights, and Morales claims those losses broke his spirit, to which he replies, chicken Tijuana, because Morales from Tijuana, which has never ever produced a major fighter before. And you can imagine, of course, what the Tijuana fans have to say about people from Mexico City, like Barrera. Barrera, incidentally, was one of the principals in the main event of the very first Boxing After Dark telecast, Feb 3, 1996, against Kennedy McKinney in a fight which, if you, you saw, you'll remember to this day, a thrilling 11-round seesaw battle in which Pereira knocked McKinney down five times and got the TKO win. Now here comes Morales, who has come on in the last couple of years to become the dominant 122-pound fighter in the world and perhaps the most celebrated and beloved of all Mexican fighters right now, though fans of Barrera and Ricardo Lopez might beg to differ. An entirely different kind of background. Morales loves to say although it's sort of apocryphally true. He loves to say that he grew up in a boxing gym in Tijuana. Here's a closer look at Eric Terrible Morales. Uh, he turned pro with his father as a former professional 
at the old age of 16. And this, he promises, will be his last fight at this weight. He's going up to featherweight at 126. And although he has a very, very professional attitude about virtually everything, he says this fight is personal. And many believe what's at stake for the winner tonight, whoever it is, is a matchup against Prince Nassim Hamed, one rung up the ladder at 126 pounds, which would be the richest featherweight fight of all time. While you're watching Morales and Barrera, you can also log on to www.hbo.com slash boxing to chat and score each round of tonight's action. While online, join in our celebration of Boxing After Dark for your anniversary. We'll give you online 10 video clips of our favorite Boxing After Dark matchups. You choose which one you believe was your favorite moment of them all. The number one through three selections will be announced later on in this telecast. So tune in to www.hbo.com slash boxing online while you watch the fight with us tonight. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, and now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina presents HBO Boxing After Dark, The Battle of Champions, 12 rounds of boxing in the 122-pound division, for the championship of the world. Sanctioned by the WBC and WBO. With the approval and sanctioning of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Chairman. Commissioners at ringside, Dr. Luther Mack, Amy A. Yu, Lorenzo Fertitta, and Glenn Carano. Executive Director, Mark Ratner. Physicians in attendance are Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. James Wishkane, Dr. Al Capana, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. The timekeepers at the bell and counting for the knockdown seconds, Al Bicek and Mike Lichella. WBC President, Jose Suleiman. Supervisor for the WBC, Rex Walker. WBO President and Supervisor, Francisco Paco Barcarcel. The three judges at ringside who will be scoring this bout on the 10-point must system are Carol Castellano. Dwayne Ford and Dalby Shirley. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mitch Halpern. This bout is dedicated to the memory of Chuck Hall. And now, are we ready? Y ahora están listos. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with black, and weighing in at 121 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 35 contests, 35 victories, including 28 knockouts, and he is consistently ranked pound for pound among the best in the world. Damas y caballeros de la zona norte, Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, the reigning and defending undefeated WBC super featherweight champion of the world, Eric El Terrible. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trimmed with blue. He weighs in at 121 and one half pounds, and he has an outstanding professional record, consisting of 49 victories, including 36 by knockout, with only two losses. Damas y caballeros de Ciudad de México, Distrito Ferraro, México, the two-time world champion, the reigning and defending WBO Junior Brotherweight Champion of the World, Marco Antonio Barrera. All right, gentlemen, this will be clean. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Let's go. 
Jim, the only reason this hasn't been called a life and death fight by the fighters or their rabid supporters is that it is more important than that. Is it, in fact, life and death for Marco Antonio Barrera, whose career may be derailed if he can't win tonight? Well, he admits that he was devastated by the two losses to Jones, didn't fight for 10 months, and has slowly restored his spirit. It would be devastating, but it depends, again, on what kind of a fight it is. So how much does Barrera have left? Is there anything left for Morales to learn? Will it be Morales' blistering overhand right, or will it be Barrera's left hook to the body? The early, early Barrera is going on the attack very early. He says his defense has improved with a little bit more head movement, but he is putting himself in the range of Morales' excellent right hand. And a solid left hook lands early for Barrera, and he knocks Morales back with the right hand. Early assault from the Mexico City star. And now Morales, understanding that Barrera has come to be aggressive, begins to look for opportunities to retaliate and lands the right uppercut. Left hook to the body by Barrera. A vicious start to what should be a high contact fight. Well, one minute into this, it's already living up to the expectations. Incidentally, don't be confused by the word Tapia on the back of the silver trunks of Marco Antonio Barrera. No relation to Johnny Tapia, the great fighter from a lower weight class. Barrera's mother's maiden name is Tapia. Barrera is forcing the action, making Morales fight going backward at this point. And he rips Morales with a left hook upstairs. And Morales lands the jab and just misses with the right hand behind. Back comes Barrera to the body. Already a welt under the left eye of Barrera. Oh, it's the right eye, Larry. Sorry, the right eye. Yep. And there's a right hand by Morales, and Barrera pins Morales against the rope. Watch your heads. Left took upstairs, hand to the body by Morales. One-two combination by Barrera. Hard right hand by Morales as they trade in the middle of the ring. Double jab by Morales and a left hook. So Morales has withstood the early assault and has matched Barrera punch for punch. Low blow by Morales and Barrera grimaces in pain but keeps fighting. Both fighters, incidentally, impressed their fans and followers and media type by speaking English at the news conference to promote the fight on Thursday. Oh, 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 oh. An expression of their ambition to be known more than just Mexican fighters, which they are, and certainly this fight can put them on a larger map. Fighters have their moments in a savage round number one. And as we go to the corners where Spanish is spoken, Ray Torres will be our interpreter. Okay, you need to you need to work with him, but at the distance. Don't don't get in his distance. Don't get too close to him. We, we don't need that. You already cut him. He's cut. You gotta keep pressuring him. Close your eyes. What's the best thing? It's nothing. You, you cut, but it's nothing. You, you need to go in, bob and weave, and get in. You're, you're going too low. Let's use more intelligence. Has there ever been a calmer looking fighter in a heated battle like this than Marco Antonio Barrera? His face never changes expression. We heard in the corner the trainer of Eric Morales, who is his father, Jose, a former fighter, urge him not to get into those kinds of exchanges continually, but to use his boxing ability and his jab. The feeling is that Morales was too willing to trade with his previous opponent, Wayne McCullough, but of course, 
McCullough didn't have the punching power to hurt him. Herrera may be a different story. And with his range, it's expected that Morales could outbox Barrera from the outside. Longer jab, longer right hand. But he loves to go inside and fight, and Barrera wants him to do that. Uh, in my mind, Jim, Bar Barrera's fight depends on how much he's willing to take. If he can take the kind of stuff that Wayne McCullough did, he's got a real chance because he's a far superior uh, offensive fighter. McCullough took uh, Morales' best shots for 12 rounds. And thereby, and thereby stopped Morales' nine knockout streak. Oh, oh. Right hand by Morales. Herrera getting hit as he backs straight up. One two combination by Barrera. And he punched the left hook to the body right through the guard of Eric Morales. Morales trying to bust up Barrera with power. Landed the right hand behind Barrera's left glove. Herrera comes back, doubling up with the left hook to the body, his best punch. And a right hand shot to the body as well, and a vicious right cross. What a fight! Trying to play the glockenspiel on Morales' ribs. And being very successful in that exchange. But back comes Morales. One, Herrera landed 36 of 70 punches to 27 of 74 for Morales. Hard left hand by Barrera. And now Morales goes downstairs looking to take some of the steam out of Barrera's punches with his own body attack. One thing I noticed is that Barrera has improved his defense, Jim. His hands are held higher. He's not quite as insolent as he was when he stuck fought Junior Jones and left himself open, got careless. Clearly had never dreamed that Jones could hurt him the way he did with his right hand. He felt invincible. Found out he wasn't. Right cross by Barrera landed right on Morales' chin. And Morales just took it and came on through it. Two rounds of scintillating action so far. Don't, don't let him take it in this level. You cannot stay in front of him. You need to box him at a distance. Just please, you need to do that. Don't get so close. Let's get some fresh air. You're waiting too long. He's hitting you. You'll be first. You hit first. Make sure that you hit him in the bottom and the low because that's where you hurt him. Don't wait. Don't wait. Herrera coming forward, sending Morales back on his heels, accomplishing his mission. Morales' corner urging him, urging him to use his boxing skills. But as he said, Jim, it's personal, and he has allowed the emotions of this event to dictate what he is doing. And the result through round two, the two punchers have landed 120 shots, and only 21 of those were jabs. So it's a power punching extravaganza so far as Morales goes to his knees, lunging forward to reach Barrera, who had vacated to the side. Yeah, he might have tripped over his foot there. Larry pointing out, you heard Morales' father between rounds, leading with his son to stay back and box. Doing a little bit more of that right now. So while the physical action in the ring has been more or less even, give the psychological victory in the first two rounds to Barrera, who made it his kind of fight and tempted Morales away from Morales' game plan. Okay. I thought it was it's more than even. Barrera is winning this fight. It's early.
Gonzalez looking to land the uppercut, a punch that Barrera seldom throws. Left hook to the body again by Barrera. Mm. He's, a, he's a much better body puncher than Morales is. And if he can stay in there long enough, it will tell. He also has the wider, more stable body. And may have a chance to weather ribcage action a little bit better than Morales. You take a look at Morales, tall, rangy, and with his ribs showing, and your automatic instinct is, I want to go to the body against this guy. Herrera may be just the man to do it. One of Morales' great strengths that he can throw a variety of punches from an assortment of angles. And now Barrera backs him up against the ropes and strikes him with the right hand again. And once again, he has Morales fighting his fight. Uppercut by Barrera. Morales comes back with an uppercut in the right hand and the left and a right and lands them all. Here comes Barrera. Here comes Morales. Best round for Morales so far. You, you worked a lot better. This is this is, was a good round. That was almost perfect. You're the master there. You're, you're the master, but you let the pupil take over. <laughs> Okay, you need to throw that jab and be a little more quicker because you let the initiative go away. In the moment, you let him get away with it. You make a miss, but you got to capitalize on it. Throw punches. Make sure they're hit, hooked. I want you to get your distance. You're the master there. You're the teacher. Seconds out. Let's go. The master... They're calling Morales in his corner, giving a lesson to the pupil. The pupil's doing pretty well so far. In round three, Barrera slowed his tempo just a little bit, throwing only 45 punches as opposed to more than 70 in each of the first two rounds. But he landed 26, 58%. So Barrera is landing more than half his punches. Morales, however, threw 76 punches in the third round, a much higher output than Barrera. Let's see how Harold Letterman has it through three. Okay, Jim, two rounds to one, 29-28, Marco Antonio Barrera because of those body shots. I, mean, I think he's ripping the body with those left hooks, certainly won the first two rounds with the left hooks. Eric Morales comes back to win the third because he outworked him. Watch Barrera's half uppercut, half hook. It's beautiful. It's not a hook, it's not an uppercut, it's somewhere in between. I have the same score. Get back in there, stay back in there. Scheduled for 12. And as the pace slows, maybe it becomes a tactical boxing match. Instead of the all-out war, we looked as though we were going to expect from the first two rounds. It's, it's to Morales' credit as a fighter that he, he could modify what he was doing in the first two rounds. He has the capacity to do what he's doing right here rather than going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Barrera must get in close. The versatility of Morales is to his favor. Now Morales backs into a corner as Barrera fires away with both hands. And they'll trade again. And you see the discipline, the dedication with which Barrera goes to the body, goes to the body, over and over, trying to wear Morales down, slow his speed, and eliminate his boxing advantages. thousand tickets reportedly sold in Morales' hometown of Tijuana. Herrera has a fan following from Los Angeles as a result of his years of fighting under the banner of the Great Western Forum. Left to the body and a hook. More left. 
Herrera is investing in this in the early third of this fight for the last third. If he can get there. Four punch combination by Morales. And again in round four, Herrera throwing many fewer punches than had been the case in the first couple of rounds. So he begins to pick his spots while still focusing on Morales' body to do his damage. And right now, let's take a look through four rounds at some of the body action that's been provided on both sides of the competitive equation. Herrera is a, is a fighter similar, similar to Chavez. We expect to see Mexican brawler boxers throwing these by kinds of body punches to break down their opponents. So as you can see, most of the damage to the body done in that tape package by Marco Antonio Barrera. Punch stat numbers through round four. Morales throwing many more now. Barrera still landing at the higher rate. So you got to go low to make, make him miss. You got to... The red welt at the edge of Barrera's right eye that you saw early in the fight has not redounded to any disadvantage at this point. It's calmed down. Morales showed some swelling around the right eye during the last round. Neither man has been cut. Neither man has bled. No knockdowns as we go into the pit. Lots of toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Herrera is plainly very conscious of the right hand of Morales. He has done a very good job of keeping himself from being hit too many clean right hands. Right there you saw him back off just a little bit and Morales' shot fell short. was adamant before the fight and saying Morales can't hurt me with his left hand all I have to worry about is that overhand right Morales I believe has blood coming from one of his nostrils Morales has been known to start slowly and then build tempo as the fight progresses but can he do it against the body attack of Barrera now Morales begins to land the right hand with greater regularity. And suddenly the drama changes again. Morales landing five or six big right hands in this sustained rally. And another. Herrera appears to be wary, trying to weather this storm. And suddenly at center ring, Morales takes over the fight with his right hand. And he's a very, very tired champion at the moment. But he's still fighting Barrera off as Barrera tries to husband his strength for another assault. Hey, where's that top ten list on Boxing After Dark? <laughs> hey, whoa, we whoa, may whoa, have whoa, a new whoa, entry whoa, here. Go. This is some kind of action in round five. Reminiscent of round 10 of Holyfield Bow 1. The first half of the round belonged to Morales. The last minute of the round belonged to Barrera. I gave that round to Barrera because I thought he inflicted more damage. And the entire crowd is on its feet in appreciation for what they saw in round 5. Marco, 
Walker. He doesn't want any more. You got him already. First half of the round. Morales, here you can see him with this barrage driving Barrera back. Barrera saying to himself, let me stay in here. My time will come, and here it comes. Right there, Morales almost looked like he was ready to go to the canvas. Right, Round six of a scheduled 12 in what has been a memorable war so far. Close fight, tough fight to score. They stop the bleeding for the moment out of the nostrils of Eric Morales. Herrera still largely unmarked despite all the punishment he's taken. Yeah, the fans from Tijuana chanting terrible, terrible. That is Eric Morales' nickname, Eric Terrible Morales. As you can see on the front of his shorts. Good right hand by Herrera. And a left hand by Barrera as Morales trades along the ropes. Both fighters seeming to try to get their breath a little bit after the blistering action in round five. Herrera goes back to the left hook and continues, as Larry pointed out, to try to invest in body punishment and slow Morales down for the later rounds. Now Morales is the hunter. Herrera the hunted, back comes Herrera. Two left hooks to the body by Herrera, two right hands upstairs by Morales. Story of the fight. Morales has been the head hunter, Herrera the body puncher. Left hook misses for Morales. Herrera goes back to the body with a hard right hand shot. Morales seeming to try to load up one shot instead of boxing. He might be too tired to use the jab and box right now. But you had to expect that round six would show some of the damage from round five. And both fighters have fought round six at the slowest pace of the fight so far. Big uppercut by Morales. But no follow-up. Now Morales gets back up on his toes a little bit. And tries to rally and steal the round. Barrera hasn't done much in this round, so there's an opportunity here for the champion. If he can produce one more big flurry. But it doesn't come. And we're halfway through the bout. And now let's look ahead to some upcoming programs here on HBO Sports. For boxing, mark these dates on your calendar. Next Saturday night when Oscar De La Hoya takes on Daryl Coley live from Madison Square Garden. March 11 when Prince Nassim Hamed defends his featherweight title against Gianni Bungu. And March 18 when super featherweight champ Floyd Mayweather meets Goyo Vargas. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Some of the stories featured this month on Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. The case of nine woman golfers who have filed a lawsuit against their country club on grounds of gender discrimination. Plus, an inside look at Lakers superstar Kobe Bryant. And then on April 17, Sports of the 20th Century presents Bill Russell, My Life, My Way. A documentary that explores the life, philosophies, and principles of one of the most compelling figures ever to play the game of basketball. Larry, you must have known Bill Russell pretty well from your days as sports editor of the Philadelphia Daily News. Yes, I did. One of the great men of sport. Uh, the statistic, that, the only meaningful statistic in, in his life, 16 years of big-time basketball, college and pro, 13 championships. The idea that Will Chamberlain with his individual statistics was better than him is absurd. 
I agree. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? <laughs> Jim, I can't make up my mind whether I like the busy guy or the heavy hitter. Three to three, 57 57. I got it all even. I thought Eric Morales did enough work, and Marco Antonio Barrera didn't do enough in round six to even his fight up. But certainly it's been going back and forth since the third round. Eric Morales certainly worked for more. Marco Antonio Barrera is still landing the hardest shots with that left hook. I have the same score, Harold. I wouldn't be surprised if all three judges have it even, but with a vast disparity in which rounds were given to which fighters, because it's a tough fight to score. Herrera with another combination, pounds Morales back over the ropes. Let go, let go, let go. Morales, for the moment, doesn't seem to have the kind of snap in his punches that we're accustomed to seeing from the Tijuana Star. I agree, Jim. So far, it looks like a rubber band that, that has lost a little of that snap. The second half of the fight is going to be like the fifth set of tennis. It's not about fighting or boxing, I should say. It's about conditioning, willpower, who's willing to put up with the most and who can finish the strongest. So it were, if it were to be a war of attrition between Morales' overhand right, power punching, and Barrera's left hook to the body, you would give the advantage so far to Barrera's body punching. But here comes Morales. Both fighters landing. Sometimes, in a physical sense, Larry, because the fight is so great go, 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 and so taxing, both fighters lose. Is this the kind of bout which, if it goes 12 rounds, could change both fighters' careers? Absolutely. Very, very few fighters come out of an intense fight like this, both emotionally and physically, the same as they were before the fight. Personal and so far profound. again in round seven. You gotta get pressure. You, you, you get stamina to fight 20 rounds, not just seven. We, we gotta go quickly now. In the last few rounds are coming up. All right, what are you waiting for? Are you ready? Throw your punches. We, we were in Big Bear and we trained perfectly. Throw your punches. Let your hands go. Let him fly. Wait, he's, he's got nothing for you. You got him now. This is the eighth round. Seconds out. Let's go, seconds out. They're honing in. One of his combinations that landed, later responded to by Morales. But in round seven, Morales was able to launch 81 punches to only 42 for Barrera. Morales has been known in the past to rally over the closing rounds, not necessarily getting stronger as the fight goes on, but maintaining his energy levels while others get weaker. Let's see if he can do it here. This is, this is Barrera's 11th year as a professional fighter. Been through a lot of fights, a number of wars. The fight with McKinney, the two with Jones. And he told anyone who would listen that he was coming in here tonight to win or go out on his shield. He said, I'm going to knock him out or I'm going to get knocked out. So far, it's been that kind of a fight and it may go the distance anyway. Both guys have beards. Both guys can take big shots. Having a beard or a chin is a function of, of your willpower, your ambition, your refusal to yield. And that's what this fight is about, really.
Morales' energy level starting to rise again. When you see Morales start to bounce on his feet, you know that he's looking for an opportunity to land a big right hand, and here comes Barrera with a one-two combination that stops El Terrible in his tracks. Another big right hand by Barrera, and the left hook. Four hard, unanswered punches in that exchange. From, but here, back comes Morales. Jim, this, this almost makes up for all of those ordinary fights that were supposed to be special. This is special. You only hope that boxing fans everywhere understood the significance of this one and have a chance to be sitting at home seeing it tonight. Referee Mitch Halpern hasn't had much to do. Both men have come to fight, not to hold. Two right hands landed for Morales. Barrera keeps coming through them. Another right hand by Morales. And another left hook for Barrera. And a right hand. And a left hook. And they trade right up to the bell again. Stag at Sharkies. Marcus, get some air. Get some air. This is yours. This is all yours. Don't let him take the initiative. You gotta be first. What's going on? You need to listen to me. Pay attention. You need to work the distance. You can't be in there. You, you have all the ability. On occasion at close quarters, you'll see Barrera actually close his eyes as he does there as he throws a punch. Hasn't hurt his accuracy in this fight. He's still landing 50% of his shots. In round eight, they were dead even in punch output. Morales throwing 63, Barrera throwing 62. Harold Letterman has the fight even going to the ninth. As I do. So Barrera and Morales trading shots and trading rounds. All three judges from here in Las Vegas. Oh, a big left hook for Barrera. And Morales comes back with the right hand again. To this point, as well as Barrera has fought, the fight is a victory for him in a sense, regardless of what happens after this. Obviously, he wants to win the fight itself. But he is fighting better than many people anticipated that he could. And fighting at the level of greatness he showed before his two losses to Junior Jones. This is the Barrera who was 43-0. He has taken three years to restore himself, and he has indeed. If he loses, it's only because Eric Morales is the best opponent of his entire career. And if Morales loses, it's because he was willing to be man enough to fight Marco Antonio Barrera which was a brave choice in and of itself. You had the Barrera rally early in the ninth round. Here's the Morales rally to match it. And now a cut under the left eye of Marco Antonio Barrera. So finally Morales has broken through on the face of Barrera to draw blood. This is the primal beauty of true prize fighting. Man against man, 
putting everything out there. 110% of each of them involved in this tremendous battle. If we go to the 12th and the fight is still this even, I doubt any commentary will be necessary. You're going to hear this crowd rise to the peak of its crescendo if they get to those last three minutes. Oh, what a combination by Barrera as Morales overcommitted with the right hand and Barrera hurt him badly to end that round. Chopping right hand by Morales. It is not a dangerous cut. Herrera begins the tenth with a big left hook. Lancing blow. Harold, how do you have it through nine? <laughs> Jim, 86, 85, five rounds to four. Marco Antonio Barrera. I just loved him in the eighth and the ninth. Two tremendous rounds could have gone either way. Barrera landed the harder shots, came back from that cut, just keeps coming and bringing that left hand. Eric Morales keeps working hard. Barrera out punching him. In another fight against a great Mexican veteran, Eric Morales knocked out Daniel Zaragoza in the 11th round to win the title. But Zaragoza was 39 years old. Barrera is still a young man at 26, even though in his 11th year as a professional fighter. Both fighters' faces beginning to swell all over from the sustained damage of the fight. Both corners trying to urge their fighters on with the sense of desperation necessary to know that they must pull out the last three rounds. Morales has landed a couple of real good clean shots in this round. And another one there, and another one there. Three straight right hands by Morales, and Barrera just keeps coming. Sometimes you get a feeling, Jim, it's almost they're giving too much to this. They're just emptying themselves. And another lead right hand lands plus for Morales. And that one hurt Barrera more than the others. Morales just trying to thrust through everything with that right hand. There is no pretense of defense in this ring. the years there have been some unforgettable matchups between great Mexican fighters. This will stand the test of comparison with any of them. Uh, I go back to the fight between Pintor and Gomez. Gomez being Puerto Rican. Fabulous fight. Uh, 14 rounds of non-stop action in that one. Until one of them collapsed. Pintor. This is every bit as good as that. Seated at ringside, Riyak Hamed, brother of Prince Nassim Hamed. He says that the prince who is fighting Vayungo Bungu in two weeks 
wants to fight the winner of this fight. Right now, he might want to fight him even more because neither of them is going to be the same by the time they get to the Prince. Right. Be that as it may, both of them can be opponents for the Prince right now. Both have certainly earned consideration for other big matchups down the road. Because even if he loses, Herrera at this moment is a liver item than he's been in three years. In round 10, Morales landed 32 punches to only 15 for Barrera. So if you had the same card as Larry and Harold after nine, you probably have it even now after 10. Five rounds apiece. Two champions in the championship rounds. How much have they got left? Morales followed by a big right hand for Barrera. Harold Letterman gave the 10th round to Barrera. That's the first one where I would have disagreed. More body shots from Barrera as he continues ripping the left hook to the rib cage of Eric Terrible Morales. Morales' versatility is that he can move if he wants to and jab. Barrera's versatility is he's more willing to go to the body as well as the head. damage that's been happening throughout the fight and now Morales beginning to paw at the right eye so the blood is coming into his eye from that cut watch Morales from time to time touch his right eye with the glove the telltale sign that the blood is seeping into his face let go let go break breaks the back Another long right hand lands for Morales. Barrera drives Morales back with another left hook to the body. Big right hand for Barrera. They had one common opponent, Junior Jones, who beat Barrera twice and was knocked out in four rounds by Morales. Largely on that basis, you suspect Morales was the heavy betting favorite here. But it looks like a near even fight as they get ready to go to the 12th round of an unforgettable war. Listen to me, Marco. I've heard, I heard that this fight is, is even. Whoever wins this fight wins the, the fight. It's all now, the last round. Last round, last round. You, you, need, you need to move a little bit more. The lateral movements is what's going to help you. You've got to throw a lot of punches. Marco, you're good. You're better than he is. In round 11, Marco Antonio Barrera put his superior accuracy to work again. Morales seemingly slowed by the cut right eye, landed only 20 of 60 punches. Barrera 33 of 53, including 31 of 45 power shots. Three rounds to go now in what has been a truly great fight between warriors who must respect each other for what they've done. Eric Morales has never lost a fight. 
Marco Antonio Barrera has never wanted one more. On Harold Letterman's card, if Barrera stands up, he wins. On my card, the winner of this round will win the fight. And I'm with you. I think it's the kind of fight where the winner of the 12th round is going to deserve to win the fight. We're closing the show. Hard right hand by Morales. Step back, step back, step back. One more show of energy from Morales, who's up and bouncing again. Break, step back, step back, step back, step back. Throughout the night. Usually when Morales has stepped up to bounce and look to land his big right hand, Pereira has answered that with left hooks to the body. something dramatic right back and he's only got 15 seconds to do it 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 what a fight i think barrera won it i think barrera won it a brilliant front round performance by marco antonio barrera fabulous fight to take a look at the exchanges here and try to see if there was a real punch that caused the knockdown here you see Barrera chasing him down earlier in the round when he hurt him now that this is the same sequence this is not the sequence of the official knockdown but this defined the round and now and here's here the moment is. that may decide the fight this was not a punch this was not a punch Barrera may have won that round anyway and won the fight. That This fight should not be decided on a no-punch knockdown. Indeed. If, if the fight is decided by two-point rounds in Barrera's favor, that will be an injustice because, as Larry pointed out, there was no punch. He missed with the little left hand, and Morales' head contacted his body instead. Harold, what's your final card show? Okay, Jim. I thought Marco Antonio Barrera certainly was effective enough in our last five rounds to win this fight. 116, 111, eight rounds to four. Marco Antonio Barrera. You got to call that 12th round 10-8. Mitch called it 10-8. It's, a, it's a, a judgment call on Mitch's part. If you go down on the end of a punch or you go down as a delayed knockdown or you go to a knee, it's a knockdown. Morales went down. Mitch called it a knockdown. It's got to be 10-8. So, Marco Antonio Barrera, the harder puncher, stunned Morales throughout the last five rounds. I thought he won it. Michael Buffer has the decision already. Let's not wait. Go. 
Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, for two fighters at 122 pounds that fought their hearts out here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas. We go to the scorecards and we have a split decision. Dwayne Ford scores the bout 114 to 113 for Barrera. Carol Castellano scores the bout 114 to 113 for Morales. And Dolby Shirley scores the bout 115 to 112 for the unified champion by split decision, Tesonanotre Tijuana, Mexico, Eric Terrible Morales. So the crowd reacts to the split decision in favor of Eric Morales. As usual, there is no facial expression from Marco Antonio Barrera to betray his emotions, although right there, I think you can begin to see his disappointment. Harold Letterman, what about three judges who saw it that way? Well, you know, Jim, there's going to be plenty of controversy over this one. Certainly, Marco Antonio Barrera, down the championships rounds, forced the fight, took it to him, stunned him on numerous occasions. I mean, there was no possible way with a 10-8 round and a 12th, you could give it to Eric Morales. I disagree totally. Nevertheless, Morales gets the call on two cards. We look at final punch stat numbers to look for some reasons why. And there's one big difference. Morales throwing 270 more punches than Barrera threw. But Barrera landing at a much higher percentage, 48% to 37%. And if you look at power punches, where the real damage was done because both fighters largely dispensed with their jabs, Barrera was right there in connects, throwing fewer connecting at a higher rate and in our view at least doing more damage with each punch now let's go to larry merchant who's with the winner and still champion eric terrible morales eric congratulations were you sure you had won the fight after the 12th round Lamentablemente el referee no lo vio bien. In, in reality, in reality it was a very close fight. Uh, I thought I won it because the knockdown was not a, a real knockdown, it was a slip. Were you surprised at how well Barrera fought you? ¿Te sorprendió de, de, lo, de lo bien que Barrera te peleó esta noche? Realmente sí, de verdad es un, fue una pelea muy dura. Creo que él, él fue, trató de ser un gran peleador arriba del ring. Me llevó en muchas ocasiones. Y realmente, la verdad, creo que muchas veces estuve a punto de irme. Yeah. Absolutely so. He fought magnificently. He fought real brave. And let me tell you the truth. There were many, many times when he had me reeling, and I thought I was going out. There were a few times, I was about to ask, when it seemed that you were almost going to go down and you just were able to steady yourself against the ropes or just manage to stand on your feet. Is that true? Eh, hubieron varias veces que él cree que tú estabas a punto de caer, pero tú fuiste mancho y te soportaste. Eso fue la verdad, ¿verdad? Realmente sí. Absolutely so. Were you, with the emotions of the fight, make you fight more of his fight than you really wanted to? Con la emoción de la pelea, tú peleaste más el estilo de él. Eso es, eh, así que eso fue lo que pasó. La gente esperó mucho tiempo por ver una gran pelea. Yo creo que se merecía ver una gran pelea sin importar los físicos, sin importar si salía limpio o no, quién ganaba. Yeah, the people waited so long for, for a fight like this, we wanted to give them all, even if I got all beat up or he got all beat up, they needed to get a fight like this. Yo vine a cumplir eso. I came to fulfill that wish, what the uh, uh, crowd wanted, of a good fight. Will you give him a rematch, or do you want to go to the 126-pound championship and fight Prince Nassim Hamed. Le daría una revancha a Barrera o quiere si la pelea con la Hamed en las 26. Yo dije que era la última vez porque peleaba en 122 libras. Lamentablemente, este, realmente me siento muy, muy, muy cansado en 122 libras. 
where's the little person? I said it all along, this will be my last fight, and then I really, really, I, it's it's weakening, making 122 pounds, I'm moving up. Would you, f would you fight a rematch with Barrera at 126 then? ¿Pelearías tú una revancha con Barrera en la 126? Con mucho gusto. Creo Absolutely, que with pleasure. He, he's a great fighter and he, he deserves a rematch. Thank you very, very much, Eric. Gracias. Again, congratulations. Back to you, Jim. All right, Larry, thanks very much. Well, the great news is a tremendous battle. Both fighters fighting courageously and well. Here's a look at the judges' scorecard by which Morales got the decision that many here, I believe, are going to see as questionable. Castellano, one point in Morales' favor. Dwayne Ford, a point in Barrera's favor. Dalby Shirley, somehow seeing the fight, three points to the favor of Eric Morales. That one, a little hard to figure. Let's go back to Larry Merchant. You may have just seen, uh, Jim, uh, on camera that Eric Morales handed the belt that Barrera had owned back to him in respect for the performance he gave tonight. Give us your feelings about the decision. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know what you have to do in Las Vegas to win a fight. Esa es la segunda pelea que me pasa esto. This is the second fight that that has has happened to me. Yo creo que la gente es la la mejor el mejor juez. The people are the best judges of all. They know who won the fight. Were you able to force him into your kind of fight simply because of your determination to get inside? Tú pudiste forzarlo a él que peleara la pelea tuya porque simplemente tú lo forzaste a que peleara la pelea adentro. Yo salí a hacer mi pelea, salí a hacer lo mejor de mí, hice una gran preparación. I, I, I came to do my, make my fight. I knew that I had a good preparation, and that's what we did. Did you think you ever had him close to stopping him? ¿Tú crees que alguna vez lo tenía al borde del knockout? Ya estaba él en el knockout. De hecho, no pude, no pude finiquitar. Pero así es esto del box. Yes, I had him a few times, but I couldn't put the last little touch on it to knock him out. All right, Eric Morales said that he would be happy to give you a rematch, but that only at 126 pounds would you fight him at the featherweight limit of 126 pounds in a rematch. El Eric Morales dice que te daría una revancha, pero tiene que ser en la 126, porque él no puede hacer la, la 122. ¿Podrías tú y quieres tú una revancha en la 126 libras? Pues no sé, voy a platicar con todo mi equipo, yo creo que gané. No tiene por qué haber revancha, yo ya demostramos los del OMB que somos mejores campeones. Uh, I will have to talk over with my camp. Uh, we feel we won the fight. This, this shouldn't be a rematch, but we have to talk about it. Thank you very, very much for a great Muchas fight. Espero que el HBO se dé cuenta que su campeón que tiene no sirve. And I want to let HBO know that their champion is not that good. Thank you very much. Jim? All right. So at the conclusion of the fourth year of HBO's Boxing After Dark, the beginning of the fifth, yet another landmark event in the series. And earlier this evening, we told you that you could tune in to our HBO website and select your favorite Boxing After Dark moment for the first four years. Tonight's online results reveal... Number three, Arturo Gatti versus Wilson, or versus Ivan Robinson, I should say. August 22, 1998. That got 16% of the vote. It was a great fight. Number two, Oleg Moskaev's memorable knockout of Hasim Rachman this past November. The fight in which Rachman nearly landed in our lap at ringside after being knocked through the ropes. And the number one choice, the first main event ever on Boxing After Dark, February 3, 1996, when Marco Antonio Barrera TKO'd Kennedy McKinney in a wild pitched battle in the forum in Los Angeles, a fight in which McKinney went down five times but was still in the fight with a chance to win when it was finally stopped there in the 11th. We'll never forget Barrera from that performance back in February of 96. Larry will never forget Barrera for his performance in what ultimately would turn out to be a losing effort tonight. Yeah, one comment about what he said in there, Jim. He said HBO's champion did not win the fight, or some words to that effect. We should make it very clear that, yes, um, Morales has appeared many times on HBO, but so has Barrera, and that we at ringside thought Barrera won the fight. I thought it was a tough decision, a close decision. You can't get too upset about a fight in which you have it one round one way and the judges have it another round but I thought Barrera did enough to win the fight I'd love to see a rematch I don't know if 
they have it in them, in them after giving so much of themselves to have a rematch immediately. Yeah, and, and after Morales takes this kind of punishment in the fight, if I'm Prince Nassim Ahmed, I say make me the Morales fight as quickly as possible. <laughs> Now's the time to fight him. Right, and I have just had one other thought watching this. You know, I was bopping around Las Vegas on a beautiful day today, and you walk down the street, and one moment you're in Egypt, and the next moment you're, you're in, in Italy, York, yeah. and or in New York, or France, or some exotic place. But I must tell you that here at the Mandalay Bay, which is another exotic place, it really is Mexico and the best of Mexico we saw tonight. Absolutely. It was great to be in Mexico tonight, and it was great to have you with us. Let's look ahead now to some upcoming programs right here on HBO. Next Saturday on HBO, he's a three-time world champion. The golden boy Oscar De La Hoya takes on top contender Daryl Coley, and welterweights Arturo Gatti and Joey Gamage go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Then... There's something kinky going on at this therapy session. Next Saturday on HBO, a World Championship Boxing Doubleheader at 9, followed by Real Sex 24 at 11.30. Next Saturday on HBO. Twelve hours from now, convicted killer Frank Beecham will be executed by lethal injection. I believe I'm going to a better place, better justice there. Mr. Beecham. I don't care about justice in this world or the next. Did you kill that woman or not? Read the transcripts. A witness saw Beecham with a gun. How could you have seen all with the potato chips? The potato chips. After a police investigation, a trial, what, six years of appeal? You love discrepancies? Clint Eastwood, Isaiah Washington, Dennis Leary, James Woods. I don't know whose head you're trying to save here. Beecham's are your own. <laughs> True Crime premieres Saturday, March 4th on HBO. Our boxing lineup in March includes Prince Nassim Hamed defending his featherweight title against the dangerous Guyani Bungu. And then on the 18th, super featherweight champion Floyd Mayweather takes on Goyo Vargas. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. One of the stories featured this month on Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, an investigation into the recent suspension of St. John's star point guard Eric Markley for allegedly violating NCAA regulations. Real Sports, where nothing is out of bounds. If you were with us for this edition of Boxing After Dark, you saw an unforgettable 12-round slugfest between two terrific Mexican fighters, the younger Eric Morales eking out a decision over the slightly older Marco Antonio Barrera in a hallmark fight for both fighters in their brilliant careers. Coming up immediately following tonight's coverage of Boxing After Dark, stay tuned for The Sopranos, and we know you will. So now for Larry Merchant and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from the Mandalay Bay Resort, Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's telecast of Boxing After Dark was produced by Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton. The associate directors, Thomas Erdelfeld and Matt Bolin. Assistant to the producer, Thomas Huffine. The production manager was Don McCallie. The technical supervisor, Bob Hunter. And the technical director was Doug Getz. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. Coming soon to HBO. As the chill of night sets in, those with the heart and soul are about to turn up the heat.
HBO Boxing After Dark is back with world super featherweight champ Floyd Mayweather. Now with his title on the line, can his blazing speed and skill douse the burning desire of top contender Goyo Vargas? Plus, junior lightweight champ Diego Corrales is fired up for a title defense against power-punching Derek Smoke Gaynor. It all happens live. Saturday, March 18th. HBO Boxing After Dark.